when are we going to solve this country? Fellow Nigerians, things are really getting out of hand. But is this news anymore? I do not think so. You only need to have a chat with the average Nigerian out there to find out just how bad things have gone. But it appears we might have just unlocked a new level in our economic doldrums. A few days ago, the governor of Edo State, Godwin Obaseki, told us that a whopping 50 to 60 billion naira was minted by the federal government for the states to share in the monthly bazaar that best contextualizes the absurdity of our federalism. For the avoidance of doubt, what this means is that Nigeria has become so broke that there is not enough money to share owing to depleting federal revenue. Governor Baseki, as the governor of a state that participates in the monthly ritual, should know what he was talking about, even if other governors may have chosen to be silent about it. The federal government has expectedly denied Governor Baseki's claims and asserted Nigeria's supposed decent financial standing. So who do we believe? Or Baseki or the mendacious federal government of Muhammad Buhari? Why the jury is still out on that, circumstantial evidence, however, seems to support Obaseki's claims, at least from our astronomic inflation numbers and other economic vitals. When a government takes the easy part of minting more money, it opens the economy to all manner of shocks and risks, including rising inflation and consequential rise in the prices of goods and services. The latest numbers from the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics as at February 2021 shows that Nigeria currently has an alarming inflation rate of 17.3%. We are currently the poverty capital of the world. Our unemployment numbers are scary with an unprecedented unemployment rate of 27%. I leave each and every one of us to speak for themselves on what has become the prices of commodities in the market. So is that a thing that has been hidden from Nigerians? As me for a moment that Governor Baseki was being unduly sensational with his claims, perhaps to score cheap political points as the federal government would have us believe, are we not actually heading towards that direction in actual fact? I read a disturbing piece the other day by the former CEO of the Defund Diamond Bank, Dr. Alex Oti, which put in alarming context our current dismal fiscal position, contrary to what the Minister of Finance would have us believe. A situation where we have borrowed up to our neck so that we now owe up to $85 billion and spend over 85% of our annual budget to service our national debt is indicative of a serious economic crisis that might set us on the Zimbabwe or Venezuelan path. So Governor Basaki is not the problem. The devil is in the details of our economy. I don't see myself as an incurable optimist. I think I'm more of a pragmatist or at best a cautiously optimistic fellow. And so if things have gotten so bad out of hand that we now have to print more money to run this economy, I don't think it is altogether out of place to join the choir of pessimists who have often argued that this country as a whole be put up for sale. Raymond is a lawyer, and he did tell me that- How much are you looking for? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and a big one at that, that he wants to serve Nigeria, the whole, country. The whole of Nigeria. Uh, 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 the truth of the matter is you cannot uh, overemphasize the fact that Nigeria is broke. Mm. In fact, one OAP would always say Nigeria is bankrupt. Mm. And uh, whatever the glowing state of the economy that the government or the Minister of Finance wants to paint, there is a, there's a saying in my place, Tabakuri uh, Asunri. Meaning. That even if we haven't died, we've slept. So we 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 <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we know what is going on. Yeah. So we can tell whether the economy is gloomy or it's performing excellently. And the truth of the matter is, we know what we know. <laughs> Just like the former governor of Lagos State said. See, the 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 economy is in a bad shape. And we run the most expensive, or one of the most expensive governments in the world. In the world. Our National Assembly are about the most expensive in the world. 
Sure. And if you look at what we deploy to the National Assembly alone, alone, and how much more we can do with it by deploying to other sectors of the economy, you can begin to uh, imagine what we can achieve. Mm -hmm. We've held on to certain assets. So if you, maybe we commence by selling Nigeria, by selling those assets, those assets that have become cost centers, yes. why are we keeping to, why are we holding on oh, to yeah. refineries sure. that are cost centers? And then another one, whooping 1.2 billion era is 1. to, 1.5, to mm. repair dollars, uh -huh. to repair Portacourt refinery. Mm -hmm. For 225 barrels per day only. We don't need that. Yeah. I, my, we, my question. So, 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 so this thing is pinning me because... Yeah. We, we've spoken to this, even in the party that I belong, okay. that we have a board revenue plan. There are some, some, some entities that Nigeria owed equities yes. that we can do without. We can yeah. sell them for good money sure. to address pressing needs sure. with long-term impact. And remember that at the end of the year, we still come and collect company income tax. Yes. So let the government focus on the business of governance. Yes and providing regulation for companies to thrive yes. exactly. and creating the environment for businesses yes. to do yes. well yes. as against government competing with, with businessmen. Business. No. Now, we have refineries. Dangote's refinery, whose capacity is even bigger than the whole of Nigerian refinery put together. They are going to be in competition very soon. Why do we need to do that? So the fact that we are broke, or do you want to sell Nigeria? Let's not sell it as a whole. Let's sell, <laughs> sell the, the, the part that we need to sell. <laughs> okay, let's, sell to let, let's sell the square part. <laughs> and when I saw Raymond coming with a very big bag, I knew he had an agenda. <laughs> My question, Raymond, is if, if and when we sell the country, what do we become? Slaves or...? No, we go and buy another country. <laughs> oh, okay, we will not have enough money to buy another country. You see, to answer your question in a yeah. very funny manner, yeah. some people have argued that um, if you should take all of Nigerians to the U.S. and mm -hmm. ask all of them to come here, mm -hmm. in under five years, we'll be wanting to come back to Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. So that tells yeah. a picture of what we are facing with. In fact, uh, one of my, my, my idols, Chino Achebe, said that the problem with Nigeria is not in the Nigerian air or in the Nigeria or her geography. It's simply yeah. and squarely a problem of leadership. It is a problem yeah. of poor choices. Yeah. Nigeria is a proverbial, is a biblical prodigal son who has eaten up all the wealth of his nation and has now become broke. It and is doesn't not, have the humility to yes. admit that yeah, I'm now broke and we need help to fix it. But they're saying, okay, no, we're still okay, exactly. we're still the best. Exactly, living, um, living a false, false creating life. a false reality and then make it, uh, and the reality on the street is that people are actually suffering. People are suffering. And why it pains me is because my generation is actually at the, at, the, at the receiving end of this. Our fathers had a better, they had a better experience than us. As a matter of fact, Chino Achebe described his generation as a lucky generation. Why would he say that? Why would he say that? But can we say the same thing for our generation? So that's why it, it, it gives me serious concern. Comfort. As I mean, I loved this topic. When are we going to sell in uh, this country? I mean, the, 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 <laughs> the sooner we are honest about our issues, the better for us. But there will be no takers. Um, that's the problem because even the little thing, when you sell something, there should be some value in it, you know. And um, at this point, if anybody uh, um, take uh, sells us, what do we have? Um, you know, quite frankly. And I think um, one of you mentioned that um, if we if we if we did sell, what would we do with what would happen? You know, what would happen to us? Mm -hmm. And the issue of leadership. There's also the issue of followership. These leaders come from among us. Yeah. Each time we know we say the leaders, but who are the leaders? We are the ones who participate in what brings out these bad leaders. So when are we followers too going to be, begin to look at ourselves and tell ourselves that this country is in the position it's in because I have also contributed to it by either selling my, my vote or not talking, speaking up when I should or not being consistent when I've seen something wrong, when I have broken the traffic light, even as simple, small, you know, things as, as, um, as little as that. Um, are we going to get to the point where we will be humble enough to tell, to say that um, we are broke? Maybe, but at that point, who cares? Everybody too has their own issue in their country. Sure. And Nigeria is always a country where either you have donor money coming in in millions, not in small figures. They give it to the government. They give it to the they states. They, we squander it. 
we don't improve on what they've given us the money for. So you collect loans. You you said we should even sell the money, if we um, sell the um, pieces, the spare parts. We will sell it. We will still squander the money. It so it's it's a vicious circle. And at this it point, is. it's a catch twenty two. So my my uh, joy no. and my hope as the unrepentant optimist is that we have us. <laughs> we have us. We have comfort. We have you. We have Francis. We have Joyce. And we have many other Nigerians mm -hmm. like us. For every one of us that has a good idea, there are 7,000 others who are like us, but just may not be as outspoken as we are. Sure. When you go to an event and you ask for questions during the Q&A session, three hands will come up only. Yeah. But after those three, check it, 15 hands will yeah. come up. Yeah. Because our hands are up, yeah. other people will raise their hands. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the hope, not hope for foolishness, but hope for energy sure. that we can still recover this country amongst us. Sure. We have the will. Sure. Or I don't think we just came here to talk and go. Of no, course, in course. our different endeavors, we are making efforts. Sure. And we will continue to make efforts. And our children will be happier for it. Sure. But we are not doing it for them mm -hmm. alone. We are doing it for, for us sure. too. Sure. We will be beneficiaries of the better Nigeria that yeah. we all are advocating for and working for. Sure. So that uh, when we have an offer on the table to sell, we will say, no, we're not selling. <laughs> well, so we I, are rebuilding. If I might just answer um, Mr. Francis. He opened by saying that he's surprised why, being a lawyer, I'm also interested in the buying and selling of Nigeria. Well, I'm from Anambra State. <laughs> and I'm happy to say that from the part of the country where I come from, buying and selling is not It's the main thing. <laughs> so, um, while we continue to push for the best options for Nigeria and Nigerians, please don't stop in your efforts to make Nigeria a better place. Don't forget, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the advocates ng. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Join us next week, same time on this station, and let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye. Bye. <laughs> five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.